Right. We can afford this. I we mean, can dogs, walk and chew. Dogs got to eat, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so we I can some afford very this. fancy pet food places. Those, we those. can afford this, and yet there is a movement to not even spend this money. Right? Correct. There's a, an overall desire to kind of cut, cut, cut without really consideration of what does that mean more broadly. And I'd say to your to your question, Chuck, it's more of a, there's a, there's practical reasons why we do space, and I think we talked about some with with climate. You know, we want to understand why we can live on this one planet and not others. And by understanding other planets, we've learned how unique and rare our planet is. You look at Venus and Mars right next to us. Those are your two kind of worst case scenarios. You either get way too hot with global warming, which and global warming was actually an idea spurred by observations of Venus. Venus. Yeah, Venus, right? is, you can make an argument that in the modern era, climate change on Earth was discovered on Venus. Yeah, I yeah. think. And is, is that because Venus has runaway greenhouse mm -hmm. effect? Boom, boom, boom. And it was our imaginations as humans are so limited that we actually we need to go out and look because then we're surprised about what can actually happen. Especially my old boss. Am I right? <laughs> he did. Limited imagination. Yeah. No, go ahead. That's, he is the problem. A, it's a solid joke. But uh, or by going out and looking at these things, we're like, oh, this can happen. Things like dark energy. You know, these things about what we don't know surprises us by definition. And it's that surprise that pushes us to modify and improve our understanding of the systems in which we inhabit as humans, which is the cosmos. And so it, it, we are behooved <laughs> to try to understand them better so we can live better in it. Mm -hmm. you know?